What's up YouTube, Jeff back again to another very exciting Samsung video for you guys. Today, we're gonna to be talking about quick setting tiles. One question I get pretty often, uh, well, behind what's your keyboard, what's your widget, what's your wallpaper, is about various quick setting tiles that I'm using in the video. Sometimes I show my quick settings panel and people are wondering what some of these quick setting tiles do. And it occurred to me that not all Galaxy users know what all of these stock quick settings tiles do. Plus I have some that are not necessarily stock that are part of Google Apps or could be part of Goodlock. And so I wanna talk about some of my favorites. So today I'm gonna to cover roughly five of them that I think might be very interesting and useful for you guys to know about. Before we get started, I do wanna thank my four-year-old son, Jonathan. We got the cat hanging out back here, just a little one on deck today, appreciate him. If you haven't yet, check out our website, sammyguru.com, get the latest Samsung news, tips, tricks, tutorials, and reviews. We have a full writing staff over there, so bookmark the website, make sure you check it daily to get all the news you need about your Samsung devices. If you're in the US, you can also sign up for our mystery box program for the Galaxy S25 series. Get a free case, cleaning kit, desktop phone stand when you pre-order through our Samsung affiliate link uh, on the day of the launch. Down here, you put in your email, your phone number, or both, you'll be good to go. We cover the shipping costs and everything like that. We use the affiliate money we get from the program to pay for the items in the boxes as well as the shipping. The link will be in the pinned comment description if you are interested in that. So let's go ahead and take a look. If we go down here to my quick panel, let me try that again. I got my quick setting instant access, flip it down there. One of my favorite features, by the way, if you haven't enabled it, just go to settings here, quick settings instant access, turn this on, it'll let you swipe down from the top right corner to get right into your quick settings. So anyway, let's go back in and take a look. Um, I wanna show you guys some that are lesser known. And of course, if you don't have these up here, you can also hit the uh, pencil icon to add them, which I'll show you a couple others still that I haven't put up here in my toggles at the end. But there's some that people have asked about, and one of them I covered in my previous video, which is this one, Screen Curtain. Now what Screen Curtain does, if you long press on these, it also tells you kind of what they do. Screen Curtain allows you to keep running an app even once you turn the screen off. Um, this is particularly useful if you wanna save some battery life when doing that, or if you wanna protect your sensitive details and things like that. Uh, I keep that one up there because I use it fairly often uh, when I'm out and about, uh, and it can be very useful, like I said, for both of those purposes, both safeguarding some private information, but also if you wanna save battery life while learning certain apps, including something like YouTube, Netflix, et cetera. Uh, and there is a way to do this with YouTube using Screen Curtain. Someone mentioned uh, in the previous video that they thought that was removed. If you run YouTube in a picture-in-picture pop-up window, you can still use Screen Curtain and it will work. So if you guys like to do that. Uh, we also have these color options. There's basically four of them. Color inversion, color filter, color correction, and high contrast fonts. These first three, I wouldn't say most people probably have a good reason for these. Um, color inversion basically makes it so the light colors are dark and vice versa. Um, you can see here, like, that's what it does. It will make your wallpaper look very trippy uh, if you have this turned on and some of your icons as well. So if you want kind of a crazy look, you can certainly run color inversion, but it's not one that I would necessarily use a lot. It's an accessibility setting. Uh, color filter as well. This will put like a different color uh, layover over on your screen here. You can turn this off or on. You see here's blue, green, etc. cetera. Um, you could definitely like do this to a friend's phone as a prank um, so that they you know, don't know what happened to their phone, but it's probably not something you're gonna use an awful lot. That's, that's my guess. Most people probably would not. Um, the next one is color correction. So color correction, what this does is this basically makes it so if you have trouble seeing a particular color, color correction can make things clearer. Um, if you have trouble with green to red, red to green, blue to yellow, it'll convert those colors. So you see what that does when I turn it on or off. That's what this one does. All of these are basically accessibility settings, uh, including the next one, which is high contrast fonts. Now this one can be useful even if you don't necessarily have any particular issue, you might just wanna make things easier to read. If you turn this on, look how much easier all this becomes to read here. It's actually something nice I used to leave on my videos to make it easier to read the text while I'm doing videos. I might actually go back to doing that as well. And also remember all these, you can actually create a, a shortcut here as well um, to do this. You can see here, choose how to start or stop this using the side volume buttons. There's a lot of ways you can do this. You can also add this to registrar, one hand operation plus, et cetera but the quick settings tiles are one of the most common ways to kind of access this very quickly. So those are all basically accessibility settings. The third one I wanna show is sound notifications. Now this one's very useful. I feel like everyone probably would want this turned on, but Samsung doesn't make it obvious how you go about doing it. So if you've ever seen this quick setting tile, 
Sound notifications lets you get alerts about important sounds like, for instance, alarms, baby cries, etc. So if you hit next, it'll tell you what you want to determine uh, sounds for, emergency, sirens, knocking on the door, appliances, etc. All of these, these are priority sounds, dog barking. Turn this on and then you can obviously choose if you want to do live transcription, sound location, when you want to give it um, recording permissions. Obviously, if you want this to work properly, you have to give it permissions while using the app. And of course, notifications, because the point is that it's supposed to notify you. So if you have Do Not Disturb on like I do, um, then you need to allow sound notifications to interrupt Do Not Disturb. So you can either do that or not. I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, and you can see here it's listening for these particular sounds. Now, sometimes it does falsely detect sounds. So just be aware of that. It doesn't work perfectly. But in my experience with having my son at home, we have a seven month old baby. I've tried it before and compared it to our baby monitor. We use a Nanit baby monitor. It works pretty good overall. I think a lot of people would enjoy this feature and I recommend you try it out. You'll also notice that once you turn it on, you'll have this persistent notification, which of course you can also turn off the persistent notification if you don't want it there. So that is sound notifications. Uh, the next one, which I introduced in a previous video as well, is the song search uh, toggle. This is a Google toggle actually. And Google uh, allows you to search for particular songs. You can actually sing a song. Uh, so let's say, hit me baby one more time. Oh baby, baby, how was I supposed? See, perfect, 59% match. I think it was more of like a 20% effort on the song, but it gives you the match. Very cool, because it also ranks it by percentage, uh, which is something that the regular circle to search version doesn't do. Highly recommend it, it's a very fun one, I use it a lot. It'll also listen for music you're playing around the device or on the device, um, and just a really overall fun, quick setting toggle to have. Uh, the last one I wanna talk about here is a lot of people know about One Hand Operation Plus and uh, the other one here, which is the wallet. This is the new Google Wallet Quick Tile, which just rolled out to Samsung phones. I've been waiting on that for a while. But Edge Touch is another good lock module, which basically allows you to prevent unintended screen touch by setting up edge, zone, edge zones rather, where touches won't be recognized. So what you can do is you can show your edge zones here and then you can add an edge zone depending on you know, where you wanna move it to. Now I have mine set, I'm not gonna change them, but here you can change the size of the zone as well. You see you've got pixel controls and everything at the bottom uh, and it just works really well overall. You can also go in here and uh, look at these sensitive zones and kind of you know customize each of these, sensitive versus insensitive and kind of how you have the various uh, toggles set up. So it is a very nice app. It's one that I do use and that I have set up for my own personal preferences. If you play with it, you can probably get it so that your gestures work a little bit better for you and that you don't have any unintended gestures that you trigger on accident. Anyway, these are five quick setting tiles that people have asked me about in the past. Uh, people want me to make more videos on various quick settings. There are a lot more that I don't use um, down here. Some of them are more self-explanatory um, and some of them also belong to third-party apps. But if you want, I could make another one talking about some more of these and also uh, which ones I think are just the most useful, not necessarily less commonly known ones, but just really useful uh, quick toggles. We do plan on making an uh, article over on Sammy Guru, uh, rounding up every single one of the uh, overall um, quick toggles on your Galaxy phones and what they do. So make sure you go visit our friends over at Droid Life too. We love Droid Life. But uh, make sure you check out Sammy Guru. We'll have that article up very soon. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Mystery Box program if you're here in the US as well if you're buying Galaxy S25. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.